joined by sports director Matt McCoy. And on the live line, it's Bill Conley, part of our best Buckeye coverage team. Bill, I, I am just so curious. You know, you're on the sidelines with the Buckeyes for so many years. You've been around football pretty much your whole life. This this moving from fifth place in the ranks to sixth place in the ranks after beating Cincinnati 42 nothing is still just giving me a little reflux. When you're on the sidelines, when you're a part of the team, does that stuff matter at all? No, not at all, especially this time of year. And let's face it, LSU, you know, they beat a team that was better than the team we beat. But, uh, you know, it's no, no problem this time of year, Joel. We got plenty of... Plenty of weeks to go. I know we got plenty of weeks, but I mean, we beat Cincinnati by seven touchdowns, <laughs> and LSU won by one. I know that their opponent was better than Cincinnati, but I mean, Cincinnati wasn't the slouch. They were just about ranked. They were in the top thirty. It seems like we got dissed there. Nah, we'll be okay. We'll be fine. Just take a one at a time, and everything will be in great shape. Yeah, uh, we, Joel, you got to not worry about it because the, first of all, the rankings don't, the college football playoff rankings don't come out for several weeks. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of time to make up. And then, you know, like Bill said, it, the only ranking that matters is the one after the conference championship games. So okay. Absolutely. Hopefully they'll be in there. Bill, uh, what, in terms of improvement from week one to week two, what did you like best about uh, – where did it jump out at you from Ohio State uh, where you felt like, boy, they made good strides in that area? Well, first of all, I think, Matt, the running game was uh, better, obviously. You know, J.K. Dobbins played great. The offensive line cleaned things up. Uh, so I think it was the one thing. And the second thing, I think Justice Field still took another step forward. i tell you, he is uh, developing into a, you know, a quarterback that makes big plays at the same time, makes few mistakes. I like that. You know, uh, I don't know if he got any better from week one to week two, but Chase Young was uh, dominant on the defensive line again. Uh, how big of an asset is that for Ohio State to have this guy that seems like a man-child and seems unblockable? Uh, i tell you, he's a special guy. Uh, he is not only outstanding, his teammates around him are outstanding. Uh, the number of players we've played at a high level there, I'll tell you what, they really, really – are stepping it up. And the depth on the defensive line, and really the offensive line too, but defense more importantly, because you put fresh bodies in there to rush the quarterback every daggone series. So I like that. So if you're Indiana and you're scouting Ohio State and you've got a freshman quarterback, they have uh, this Michael Penix who's put up some good yep. numbers in two games, but he's, yep. played, he's played Ball State in Eastern Illinois. Are you? What are you doing to try to handle that defensive front in general, and uh, Chase Young in particular? Well, first of all, if I'm uh, the coaching staff, I'm not going to let him watch too much film. I don't want him to get scared. <laughs> so, you know, you don't want to do that. So, uh, you know, he better be buying the, his offensive line a bunch of steak dinners right now to get them to play good because it's going to take a masterful performance. So, you know, what they'll try to do is not make him hold on to the ball too much. Get rid of it as quick as you can. A lot of short passes, maybe some screen passes and, you know, they're a team that throws the ball over 70% of the time. So, uh, you know, they can't rely on the running game that much. So they've got to find some way to protect the guy. Bill Conley, our guest, part of Best Buckeye coverage here on News Radio 610 WTVN. When you talk about throwing the ball, Bill, I mean, i got to get back to Ohio State side of the ball and Justin Fields. I mean, you know, we heard some guys watching, you know, before play actually started, and they're like, this Justin Fields guy throws the ball as good as anybody. And you're like, you don't remember last season? That guy was pretty good. But when you look at what he's done so far, I mean, his numbers are literally identical to what Dwayne did last year with total touchdowns and passing in that. I mean, is this expected at all? Well, I tell you what, he's when you got a guy that is first time starting uh, and really very little Division One experience at all, uh, he's playing a very high caliber of football now. The thing I like about too, Joel is he, what he's doing, uh, he's reading coverages very well because look at the number of different receivers he's thrown to each game, 9-1 game, 8-1 game. And so he spreads the ball out good. He throws it to the guy that's open. That means he's reading coverages really well. You know, is there any difference, Bill, in, uh, you know, I don't know, practice this week, tempo, message from the coaches, because this week it's Indiana and it is a Big Ten opponent. I mean, conference season starts is there any intensity awareness or whatever that gets raised at the woody hayes facility this week 
Well, yeah, each week has been kind of special. Obviously, the first season opener and Ryan Day's first uh, game as a head coach. Then the second game, first game against an in-state opponent, which we haven't lost to in forever. And then uh, now the start of the Big Ten uh, season. It will be mentioned, but I'll tell you what, if you're playing as good as Ohio State's playing right now, you don't want to change much of anything. You won't keep the task at hand. This uh, Indiana team, um, they always seem to be – look, Ohio State hasn't lost to them since 1988, so it's not like <laughs> – it's not like they're a th- – I don't want to say they're a thorn in their side because they're like an automatic win, but there have been countless times, especially the last several years, where you expect – you know, Ohio State's favored by 15 in this game, but it ends up being a lot closer than that, or it's tight until Ohio State pulls away late. What is it about Indiana that allows them or has allowed them to kind of hang in there against Ohio State when we expect the Buckeyes to kind of roll them? Well, you know, we always get everybody's best game, and that's the same with this one. And it's a season opener, and it's a place where Kevin Wilson used to coach. All Mm -hmm. these intangibles that uh, that Indiana has. And the thing about this, I got to say about this team, Matt, is uh, they're as good a throwing team as they've ever had in Indiana. So this will be the first game. Our secondary, and really linebackers in, in some ways, are going to be tested uh, because they're a, they're a really good group. But hopefully we can take advantage of their youth a little bit. You uh, you look down the line, Bill. Uh, the thing that gets me is, you know, on the field and what we always hear is it's one game at a time and all that stuff. But, I mean, you, you can't help – but look a little bit past this game, and then you got Miami of Ohio, and it's that's a give me a break game. And then you get back to the Big Ten. I mean Nebraska. Then you got Michigan State, and you're gonna go okay. That's a real game. Then you see Wisconsin. Then you see Penn State. And really, if you just follow all the national talking heads and all the people that are in the know, there really is one game. I mean, it's the last game of the year. So when you're on the sidelines, and you know you're playing at a high level, you just come off a 42 nothing win. Do you talk about that at all? Is it just like business as usual, got to keep improving, and just go, go, go with your hair on fire? Well, it's business as, as usual because you, you're you so wrapped up. This, this is the truth now, Joel. You're on the sideline. You're in the booth. It doesn't matter. Your concentration is on getting that game won one play at a time, and you don't have time to worry about all that other stuff. And really, as coaches, you spend so much time. You're, you're in the office about 6 in the morning, and you stay till about – 10, 11 a night, you don't have time to listen to news or anything like that. You're too busy. You're too busy working out. I will say this. You have a point there, though. We get by this one, and uh, we've got the first three under our belt. Then there's some time to to make some future planning. You might not spend all your your time on just the next opponent if it's a team like Miami of Ohio. Uh, but you can't let one slip up on you. You really got to stay focused. All right, uh, Joel, one of the big features we have on Bucks Line every Thursday is Bill does a Know Thine Enemy segment where he comes up with, you know, quirky information that okay. really has nothing to do with football <laughs> about the <laughs> upcoming opponent. I'm wondering if you have started your crack research on Indiana yet. Well, I've got some special agents out there you know, <laughs> okay. doing some research. <laughs> And they're supposed to report back to me uh, by the evening time. So I will have some stuff ready to go by Thursday. In, in a nutshell, he's got bubkis right now is what uh, he's saying. Uh, last week he told us about the two, <laughs> what are they, lions at Cincinnati? Uh, con- concrete, concrete lions. Yeah. Concrete lions that supposedly legend has they roar if a virgin walks by. Like uh, This is the kind of wow. information Bill Connolly is able to deliver to you on Thursday That's night right. Bucks line. Well, we know why he knows that because he probably hung out by the lions waiting. <laughs> Waiting for the roar. Oh, man. (laughs) Bill, we always love it when you come on. The information is awesome, and that's what it's about. No thine enemy, 730 during Bucks Live. We always do it at 730. We'll be ready for it, Matt. Thanks. That's Bill Godley on News Radio 610 WTBN.